Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 11 of a series where we create a design system in Figma called FDS. In this episode, we'll be doing our first component, the spinner. <coughs> and here we are in the FDS components web library where we're going to create the component. And when we're finished, we're going to copy it over to the FDS components app library. So if you're a designer that's working on a web project, you can get the spinner from that library. And if you're one that's working on an app project, you can get it from there. We're going to do that a little bit during the series where we have a button in both of these libraries, but sometimes you're going to end up with components that are only available in web and some that are just available in the app. And before we start, we have to make sure that this library can see the design tokens library. So let's just click on that, go over to assets and then make sure it's published. So if I head to the library icon here, you can see the libraries. You can see that this is the FDS design tokens one. There's no changes, but I published it previously so we can actually see it in the other libraries. You can see that I've done that with the iconography library as well, and then added it back to the design tokens library. We'll be able to see both of these and utilize the variables that are in here inside our web library, and then the icons that are in here in that library as well. And to check this, let's go to the assets tab, hit the library icon again, and we can see them here design tokens and iconography have been added. Let's go back to the file tab, click on component name, double click on it and change this to spinner. Inside spinner, go to assets, go to design tokens, tools, the tools folder, and then let's grab an FDS heading and drag it in. I'm just gonna turn the X and the Y of that to zero and zero. I'm going to select this and type spinner and you can either do that directly or you can do it over here. And then we've turned on the intro text and what are we going to put in there? Okay, let's describe what a spinner is by going to the component gallery website, which is a great resource for exploring what components are across multiple design systems in the industry. And at component gallery, let's just type in spinner, press enter. And then let's just copy and paste this back over to our file and use that as the description. Double click on this text and hold down shift option command V that'll copy it without using its style. And there we go. Now we're going to resize this to give us some room. Let's just make it 1024 for now. Then let's go back to the file tab and create a frame by hitting F on your keyboard and dragging. That is 48 by 48 and width and height. Okay, I'm just going to move it over to here. So it's about 48 from the left and about the same from here. So let's go one, two, three, one, two. There you go. Let's rename it to spinner and then create a component out of it. All right. Let's zoom right in and then hit O to draw an oval drag that out and we want this to be about 44 by 44. This is going to be the large version of the spinner so we're just going to position it right in the middle like that. Then we're going to remove its fill and then add the stroke. So the stroke is going to be border brand. We're going to change the thickness with a variable to L4 then we're going to change this from inside to center. Then we're going to go up to the design panel and where ellipse is, just hit edit object. Then we're going to tap on this section and remove it. Just press enter. Then we're going to come down to the start and end point and make those round. Okay, then let's go rename that path spinner. And then select the whole component, go over to spinner and add a variant. So that just multiplied it and placed it underneath itself. We're going to change this one to size equals L. And this one is going to be size equals L as well. And then we're going to add another variable. And this can be size L as well. And just uh, bear with me for a moment because we're going to select this one and change the border 
to inverse and then change this to negative because we're going to add another variable by clicking on this and renaming it with this at the end of it. So type equals primary. Now we can just go select the next one and add another one over here and type. This is going to be inverse. And then we can select the negative one and add negative here. Cool. So now we have one size large, which is 48. And then we have the types primary, inverse and negative. So let's just zoom out for a sec. Let's grab this and resize it. Then select all three. And I'm going to hold down option and drag until I have duplicates of them. Then I'm just going to move them down there. And then in the size, I'm going to change that from large to M or medium. Then while we've still got them selected, we're going to go to layout, hit constraint properties and change this to 24. Now that resized the variant, but it didn't resize the path inside. So I'm going to select them all by holding down command shift and then finding the paths and then changing this to 22. And I'm going to change their thickness to 2. Then select them all. Just make sure they're all one pixel away from the left and the top. And you're probably wondering why we have multiple sizes. Well, the large one can be used to load a whole page. And then we're going to create some button components that need a loading state. So the 24 one is going into the large version of that. And then we're going to create one more size, which is small for a small button. Let's select all these variants again, hold down option and drag, move them over to the right and then move them down again. Then we're going to change this to S. Right now we need to make these 16. So they're all still selected. Let's just type that in there and then do the same thing we did last time. Change this to 14 and then change the width to one. Now let's just move into these small ones and see if they're the right size. And that's okay because if we move it up and left, it's going to get cut off. So let's undo that. Zoom out. Select the component and then come over here to layout and hit resize to fit. Make sure that that is still 48 from the left and also from the top. So how far is it away from that text element? 32. Okay. One more and then one more again. Great. Now, if we drag one out and just play around with it, we've got large, medium, and small. Let's go back up to the large and we've got primary inverse, which is white and negative. Fantastic. Let's select that and delete it. And that's it. We've finished doing the web version of it. Now we need to copy this over to the app version. So the designers there can just pull it directly from that library. So let's go to the layers panel, just collapse that, select the component and the heading, copy them, go over to here, go here and paste them. Now, every time you paste something in Figma, it goes in a weird place. So how I normally get this aligned easier is to just make a square, set this to zero and zero, and then grab my elements and drag it into position. And we could press one on our keyboard to center it. Go and change the page name to spinner. And we're done. So let's go back to the web library and then go to assets. And we can see local assets here has one component. And if we click on it, we can see that we can insert the instance and even play with the properties. So let's insert one. Okay. Now, Every time you create a component, Figma does this wonderful thing where it adds white to everything. So let's go and select all the variants. Let's go back to file, remove this, go back to the app version and do the same thing there. Back to web, select this instance and let's just zoom in. And here we go, primary and verse negative, just like we saw before. We can also 
check out how dark mode looks, right? So imagine this was on a white background and light mode, which it's going to be, and then it was on a dark background. So let's just give it one. I'm gonna group it, add a frame, add some auto layout, add some padding. Let's give it 32. Give it a border radius, why not, to eight. And then make its fill L1. Right, now let's just say dark as the name of this. And then go to appearance, get a semantic color and then change that to dark. There you go. Now if I select it and then just change its thing, if I inverse, which is black, it's gonna make it disappear. And then negative. But let's delete those, hit one again, and that's it. We've created the spinner component. In the next episode, we'll be creating the button component. So I hope you're looking after yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.